This video is sponsored by the Ultimate Freelancing Bundle from StudyWebDevelopment.com, which gives you everything you need to start your freelancing business, including a 130-page in-depth guide, invoicing and client proposal templates, website templates, an SEO checklist, and much more. Visit the link in the description and use the code BRAD20 to get 25% off. Hey, what's going on guys? So I just wanted to talk a little bit about a couple technologies and also technology bashing. So basically content creators, course instructors, and, and, and people like that, people like myself, uh, just talking trash about certain technologies just as a whole, like not even in certain situations, just as a whole. Um, so one of those is Bootstrap. Now, uh, before I get into the whole bashing thing or whatever, you know, I have a bootstrap course and I have people that uh, make inquiries to me asking if they should learn it. They say with, you know, with CSS Grid, should I even learn bootstrap? And that that question, that comparison just really baffles me because CSS Grid is phenomenal. It, it's a grid system. It's been added to CSS Core and it's probably the best thing that's ever been added to CSS but to compare it to a full UI framework just doesn't make much sense. Um, now, if you're comparing it just to the grid system in Bootstrap, then that makes sense. That's probably what, what these people mean when they say that. Maybe they don't know, maybe they really don't know much about Bootstrap. They don't know that there's, there's so much more to it. Um, but you know, when I use Bootstrap, I never have used it just for the grid system. I use it for the responsiveness, the nav bars, the alerts, the cards, the utility classes like spacing and, and the display classes, uh, browser compatibility. There's, there's so much more to it than just the grid system. And it, it was designed to be very practical and for you to get things out very quickly, to create UIs very quickly. And they also look really nice and you can really customize Bootstrap layouts with SAS and, and you know, make it look not so bootstrappy. And I'm not just talking about Bootstrap, but Materialize, Bulma, all of these UI frameworks, they're all, they're all created to speed things up, which is um, a very good thing in the world of like freelancing or if you have your own business, as I did a few you know, years ago. Um, and to, to bash these technologies, I just I think is unfortunate. Um, and same goes with PHP. You'll see a lot of, of developers talk trash about PHP and WordPress, which is, you know, obviously built on PHP. It's a content management system. And, uh, you know, WordPress and PHP are just phenomenal for freelancing and for dealing with clients. Um, you know, I think a lot of people that talk trash about PHP are people that have worked mostly with like teams and at, at big companies where there's a back end guy, there's a front end guy, there's a designer, you know, a UI guy. So you have all these different people doing different things and you get paid your, your salary no matter what. Well, when you're freelancing or you have your own company, everything is on your shoulders. So you need to look for technologies that are very practical, such as Bootstrap, such as um, PHP and WordPress. These things are a godsend to freelancers. Um, and I'm telling you this from experience. So, you know, you have to look at both sides. There's basically two types of developers. There's the kind that works for big companies on teams, and there's the kind that work that they work basically either by themselves or maybe with a couple other people. And these technologies are really good for those for that side of web development. So, you know, I try not to shit on any any technology, even if it's like an old ass language that nobody uses anymore. If it works for what you're doing, then by all means, use it. Who the who the hell am I to tell you not to use something when I don't know your situation or or, you know, what you're building um, in your experience and so on. Um, you know, if you're building and, and, you know, this might sound weird coming from me because I do a lot of like full stack applications. I just did a Mern stack uh, course on Udemy and on YouTube. Um, and I don't do that much WordPress stuff, but I used to because I was a freelancer and I ran my own business and that's what these are good for. I personally enjoy building like Node.js apps and stuff like that more. Um, and I think that that's where it's at for like the big companies and getting 
good jobs at companies, stuff like that. But I also remember what it was like to be a freelancer and have my own business. So I can see both sides of the spectrum and I try not to shit on either one. Um, but you know, if you're building a website for, let's say Johnny, the florist, florist down the street, and you know, he's paying you a thousand dollars, you're not going to go and build some complicated backend API, um, you know, build a, get a, get some front end framework and connect to it. Maybe an Amazon S3 bucket so he can upload images and then deploy it to DigitalOcean or something like that. You're going to build a WordPress site and deploy it to cPanel. You know, this is a guy that maybe he'll get a thousand visitors per month. There's no sense in going in, in overcomplicating things and building his application or his website as if you were building it for Google or Amazon. It's just I've seen a lot of this lately and it's just it doesn't make sense to me. Um, you know, he's going to be perfectly happy, more than happy with a WordPress site where he can log into his admin panel. He can change his content. He can, uh, upload maybe a new arrangement or something. Maybe you can build a little custom plugin where he can upload images locally and show his arrangements. He's going to love that. And it's going to take you a couple, maybe a couple days, you know, of, of WordPress work rather than months of building, starting with the back end and the front end and, you know, not using bootstrap because we don't want to do that. We want to use custom UI, HTML, CSS, JavaScript components. Um, you know, it's just, it's stupid. It's, you want it, you want to look at your situation and use the, the right technology. Don't just go by, what's the best, what's the fastest overall. You want to look at your situation. And even if you're a new developer and you see videos of, you know, people that have been developers for a while, maybe saying, don't use Python for web development. Don't, you know, it's, it's great for data science, but it sucks for web development. Don't, don't use Django or Flask or anything. And you just took, you know, two courses in, on Django and Flask and you really like it. You created some really cool stuff with it. And now you're all discouraged and you think, you know, you should just throw it away and start over with whatever this dude is telling you to. Just don't do that. You know, go follow your gut and then do research from multiple sources. You know, don't ever listen to one person, including me. Um, you know, I can only give you what I know and my experience and insight, but I'm just one person. So, you know, take what I say and what everyone else says with a grain of salt. That's really um, that's really the point of, of what I'm trying to say. Uh, hopefully it's it's coming out clear. So thanks guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, one of the best, if not the best resource that I can refer you to for starting a freelance business is at studywebdevelopment.com slash freelancing. The creator, Kyle, shared it with me and I can personally vouch that this bundle is well worth it and it gives you a 130 page guide to freelancing and also comes packaged with things like an invoicing template, client proposals, HTML, CSS templates, a portfolio website, access to a private Facebook community, and much more. So use the code BRAD20 and get 25% off today.